Hi everybody, and hello YouTube and the entire Power Rangers fandom. This is Anthony with a vlog regarding fellow Power Ranger actor and legend Jason David Frank. At the time I'm recording this video, today is November 20th, Sunday, 2022. This has been a really distraughtful day as a Power Rangers fan as I'm wearing this Mighty Morphin Power Rangers shirt on occasion. I have worn this a couple of times, probably in a video or so, but not really, but I, I mean, I'm losing track myself. Today, I want to talk about the passing of Power Ranger legend Jason David Frank, who played Tommy Oliver, the original Green Ranger, White Ranger, White Ninja Ranger, Red Zeo Ranger, Red Turbo Ranger number one, and the Black Dino Thunder Ranger, and with the comics with Lord Draken. He has passed away age 49 of apparent suicide because um, I'll talk about suicide in a moment and, and momentarily and talk about what went down a little bit. And with me on the table, I have a few Power Ranger items dedicated to Tommy, such as, you know, just gathering some stuff um, that I had from over the years that I've already done reviews of on my channel, like the Legacy Movie White Ranger Morpher, um, the Legacy Tiger Zord, Dragon Zord, and my... Leg the only two legacy figures I got out got out from the box to honor, and also still my lightning collection, Mighty Morphin White Ranger. Even though I'm going to get the Green Ranger soon, but it's just this is just not the time to talk about this. And like you know, for all the f sorry, for all the flack I had given Tommy as a character in Power Rangers some of the time, but I gotta realize how much he meant to me as a 90s kid and as a Power Rangers fan, a longtime Power Rangers fan of nearly 30 years. And I do wanna reminisce in retrospect a bit of how I feel felt about Tommy as a character over the years in Power Rangers before I get to Jason David Frank, the man who is now departed from our world and our void of the morphing grid, um, if you will. You know, Tommy, the character, much like JDF may be gone, but his legacy of how how much he meant to the power to all of Power Rangers will still be with us. I was not expecting this news since late last night. I was doing something like editing some stuff for Power Rangers Lost in Galaxy 2022 on Vegas, and then I got a notification on Instagram. I got Instagram on my computer, and I'm part of a Power Rangers, you know, chat log um, on Instagram on a Power Rangers podcast thing on Instagram. And I saw a notification from one of my uh, friends on Instagram and the fandom on that chat log saying how JDF passed away. I was like, what? And then when I when I heard that, when I saw the the, the notification, I felt my I felt my balls going up my stomach a bit. And, you know, and I was like, no, there is no way JDF is gone. No way he's gone. And. You know, for all the flack I give, I used to give Tommy for being the Green Ranger, and 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 I got realized how much he meant to us and stuff. But I was like, there's no way. And then when I was scrolling through Doom scrolling Twitter uh, feeds, and even he, Jason David Frank, was blowing up on Twitter last night, late last night, overnight between two o'clock until six, and then. I was like, so, okay, so I, well, I, I couldn't sleep that night, so then I went to bed around 4 o'clock, and then I wake up 12 in the afternoon today as of this recording, and finding out that he passed yesterday, and it has to be apparent um, suicide, and I had no idea um, that happened. I mean, I didn't really think that in all my years as a Power Rangers fan... I would ever think Jason David Frank, JDF, himself, would end his life. I do recall back in that very old 2010 David Yost interview with No Pink Spandex. If you recall with David Yost's interview from 12 years ago on No Pink Spandex, when he opened up about why he quit Power Rangers and when he succumbed to his opening of, of his homosexuality, that at one point in David Yost's life, he wanted to end his life because of the harassment he faced when on set of Power Rangers um, because he was gay, um, David Yost, who played Billy, the original Blue Ranger. But David at least is still alive and well. It's JDF we lost, and it's unfortunate. For anybody who was a member of the original six and was leader of the Power Rangers, when Jason, Zach, and Trini left 
And when Rocky, Adam, and Aisha came in open arms to take over their places, and then when they lost their original Mighty Morphin powers, and when they got the new powers via the ninja powers, thanks to Ninjor, and and then Catherine comes in to replace Kimberly, and then Tommy welcomes Kath, Catherine as a new Pink Ranger and stuff. And then when the Rangers lost their original might, lost their new Mighty Morphin powers via the Ninja Coins uh, during the Alien Ranger stuff. And then when they and and then when they transitioned from Mighty Morphin to Zeo, and then after 50 episodes of Zeo, then they transitioned into Turbo, shifting into Turbo 25 years ago. And then Tommy retires after 19 episodes of Turbo as the Red Ranger and replacing have TJ replace him. And then Tommy comes back in Legendary, I mean, uh, uh, Forever Red and Power Rangers Wild Force 20 years ago, which is one of my all time still favorite team up episodes for the last 20 years. And I will get my retrospective talking about Wild Force and my behind the scenes rant about Forever Red going on the Terra Venture podcast this week. And then he comes back in Dino Thunder as the Black Dino Ranger, as Dr. Tommy Oliver working as a teacher in Reefside High School for. Connor, Ethan, Trent, and uh, Kira, and then comes back 10 years later in Super Mega Force as the Green Ranger, leading in charge of all the past Rangers. And then, sadly, Super Ninja Steel's Dimensions in Danger is now, as of now, is the final time we ever would see Tommy in Power Rangers. So, what happened? Like, what led to JDF want to take his life? And what I did hear that JDF. Um, what I did hear that JDF um, got in trouble with his wife when she found out he was cheating on her for another woman. And yeah, there was a lot of suspicious stuff going on this past 2022 a little bit, but even though I don't want to uh, glorify it or anything. I knew something was off even when I did that video talking about how JDF retires from Power Rangers on my podcast last month after following up my rant about Serena Vincent, who, by the way, also appears in his Legend of the White Dragon movie with a few other Power Ranger alumni, Jason Font and Ciara Hanna. You know, I knew something was up even when I was watching his uh, when I was watching that Legend of the White Dragon panel for Power Morphicon. Um, and when I did a video talking about, you know, why we, you know, and looking back on all that stuff I said, um, about Tommy and like how we need to focus on other Rangers that hadn't had much spotlight than him, but I got to realize how much he was very important, um, to the Power Rangers legacy and how important he was to the fans and the kids that grew up on him. I never really thought, aside from, yeah, Kevin Conroy, who was the voice of Batman since the Batman the Anime Series and, and all the other appearances he's done Batman in, like Justice League, Justice League Unlimited passed away last week. I'll talk about Kevin Conroy this week and remnants of how much he impacted me as a Batman fan for ever since the day I was born in 1992, since I was, you know, very small to... Uh, grow up on Batman, just being born on Batman before Power Rangers would come along um, a year later, 1993, since 2023 is the 30th anniversary coming up. And this is just not a great time. This is not a great time to lose a, a legend, a childhood icon, uh, let alone a pop culture icon, just like we just lost um, Batman uh, recently. Uh, and uh, it's just unfortunate. Losing both these childhood icons in one month or week and a half is just a week apart. This has already reminded me in 2018, and I know I didn't get to make a video talking about Stan Lee and when he passed away, how much he meant to pop culture and the Marvel Universe. And I feel guilty for doing it, but after uh, the reason I didn't want to do that video about Stan Lee because you know after I had did my you know thing of Power Rangers in 2018, you should know. Um, after I did my fan film of, you know, what a Power Rangers, I just, in 2018, I just decided not to make as much videos, um, going forward. And I slowly started to deteriorate mentally myself. And I also want to discuss mental health even more on this video because people need to be aware of my mental health struggle as much as anyone out there with a mental health struggle. Um, you know, I had no idea Jason David Frank, um, he committed suicide this was very apparent, um, and this is not the only time we had a Power Ranger, uh, former Power Ranger actor, commit suicide. Even though I haven't talked about 
Pua Magasiva, who played Shane, the Red Ninja Storm Ranger from Power Rangers Ninja Storm, and how he committed suicide. But then I also want to delve deep into this video talking about men who suffer from mental health or had been um, scrutinized with false allegations of again you know by the women in their lives of like rape or sexual harassment or stalking or any other thing women would say that the man did and it just um it's unfortunate that society need, needs to understand that men can be suffering too and to think men are always perpetrators and women are the victims of, of things like oh cheating on your spouse or girlfriend or you've been accused of stalking or sexual harassment or rape or anything horrible to ruin that man's life. It, it, it's sad, you know, it seems like men are always getting overlooked, but you have to understand, it makes sense to think about women and children in circumstances when women are, women and children are the victims of certain stuff like this and men are the perpetrators and they are the ones that need to be put behind bars or what. And the women and children both need to be safe because we have to think about both women and children because but JDF never really did anything criminal like what I heard about, again, the actor who played the Red Ninja Storm Ranger. And I feel like JDF has fell into what I call the Red Ranger curse. Because also, as a Power Rangers fan, earlier with Austin Saint, the Austin St. John stuff, and I already said this in the podcast also, but never did an in-person vlog about it as a fan, Ranger, about Austin St. John's um, tax trouble thing with COVID tax fraud trouble and how um, why he's been banned from coming back to New Zealand if they do any more Power Ranger reunions when we have a big milestone anniversary, even though he did come back for Beast Warfers. It feels like of all the Power Ranger casts, as much as we all adore the Mighty Morphin, when it comes to mainly the original six Rangers, there's always... I don't know why the original six Rangers are like the most troubled cast of Power Rangers we've had so far. The OG, the original six. And then all of a sudden, now we lost two of the originals, of the original six. You know, going by the lineup outside, if you exclude the, the, the replacements for red, black, pink, and yellow. But when you think about the OG six, Kimberly, Billy, Zach, Jason, Trini, and Tommy. When you think about those six Rangers there, the OG six. Now we lost two legends of the Mighty Morphin. And, you know, Tui Trang, it, it's like now Tommy and Trini can finally have what uh, uh, something again up in heaven, in the Ranger, in the Ranger Heaven. And as well as reuniting with other past Rangers that we've lost in real life. Uh, Trini, Udana, Shane, Master Fant, Xenowing. And now Tommy is the sixth ranger. Who would have thought number six, the sixth ranger that we would lose in real life in Power Rangers in the fandom would now go. That's six rangers we've lost in order. Trini, Udana, Shane, Xenowing, Master Fant, and now Tommy. I'm happy that even though as much as I used to badmouth Tommy and JDF for a while, I realized I got to realize how much he meant to me as a Power Rangers fan growing up and as, you know, not just Mighty Morphin, but like all of Power Rangers. Um, but I mean, if the, the, the sky was gloomy and dark and raining, but it's bright and sunny today, but when Kevin Conroy died... For as a Batman fan, it was gloomy and dark. It made sense to set the mood of losing Kevin Conroy with that rainy, dark forecast where I live at, and uh, it was just unfortunate. But as a bright, sunny day, I guess the white light had came upon us. When so, the White Ranger has left, and realizing with that bright, sunny day, and I got <sighs> Tiger Zord with me, and and all of that, Dragon Zord for all the flack I've given. Tommy as the OG Green Ranger. 
you know, and and then when Tommy became the Red Ranger, I was, you know, again, Tommy, you know, when Tommy became the Red Ranger, that's when I really got into being into Red Rangers more. And then Dino Thunder, you know, with that suit, with that black and gold Brachio helmet and all of that. I just, it's just really unfortunate how JDF um, came and went. Now, of all of the actors, if I wasn't still where I'm at personally myself, I would have had the time years earlier before where I am right now, and even today, I would have still got to meet any Power Ranger actor at Ranger Stop or Power Morphicon and stuff, or any other co uh, convention JDF would go, and any other Power Ranger actor. I wanted to meet Jason David Frank in person. If he didn't die today, yesterday, if I saved enough money to travel to go to cons, I would have gotten to meet him in person finally to complete that and then meet the other actors from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as well as Zeo and Dino Thunder's cast and other Power Ranger actors too. Mainly the cast of Rangers that was with JDF as Tommy. You know, Mighty Morphin, Zeo, Turbo, Dino Thunder, but that's one Power Ranger actor I really wanted to meet personally if I had if I wasn't you know, if I was financially situated myself and if I was mentally getting my life and stuff together after everything that happened uh, in my 12 years of doom and gloom and despair. Um, and I, I, I mean, I, I did look up the top. I looked, I, you know, all my years I've looked up the Power Rangers for hope as a beacon of hope like Superman or Batman and Spider-Man. But the Power Rangers, I have always been, you know, the reason why I related to the Power Rangers a lot more than any superhero I grew up with. It's because the Power Rangers were a very unique group of superheroes. They may have been not Marvel or DC, but they were their own unique branding of heroes, much like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you know, the Power Ranger, you know, Power Rangers have been around for 30 years now since I was a little wee little 1-year-old, you know, infant boy. And uh, with, with autism and, and stuff like that. And here I am, 30 years old, 30 year old autistic man uh, in, in uh, Gavisburg, Maryland, and uh, still doing content about Power Rangers and realizing how much JDF meant to the fandom and how much he meant for the franchise. And for all the flack I used to give him for being an egotist, I need to take that all back too because I really should have never. Uh, said stuff about JDF uh, in a negative light, and I, I, I really should have never said that stuff. I really should have never did. Um, even in my recent Terra Venture podcast video talking about uh, JDF the way I did, it's wrong. It was really wrong. Even what I said, even years before th this, you know, back on the channel in some videos talking about how Tommy is overrated and all of this, and uh, I, I really need to take all of that back. Now is not the time to badmouth Jason, David, Frank, and Tommy since the man is gone. Um, because, you know, Tommy was one of my favorite Power Rangers. Why do you think he was a legend? You know, love him or hate him, he was the man that put the Power Rangers franchise on the map. 29 years ago with the five-parter Greenwood Evil where he was introduced as the original Green Ranger when he was succumbed by Rita's evil to become her evil Green Ranger. And but then when the spell was broken, Tommy would join the team and the rest was history. But I also need to take back everything I say about the Green Ranger, realizing that while I know a lot of people grew up on Tommy as the original Green Ranger, but I was really more of a White Ranger guy because you know by the time of season two, uh 1994, two years old at the time. That was when Power Rangers was at its peak with its popularity in 1994. And by the time my brother was born in 94, that was when Power Rangers was kicking in with its popularity. And um, once Tommy became the White Ranger, that's when I really got into his character. Now, I know that when I was, when I, you know, all my life, I wasn't really that, I, as much as I liked the Green Ranger in his costume. But then, looking, if you go back to all of my videos, well, well, videos that you could watch from my past where I did, well, I did have a lot of videos talking about how the Green Ranger is overrated and I I need to take that all back and all that stuff I used to say about the original Green Ranger, 
and how like the reason why a lot of people prefer Tommy is green over the white ranger is because yeah we know green he had the coolest looking suit of the bunch he had the shield that you know that was all gold and how the helmet was very similar to the red ranger's helmet he had a cool looking balance of green and white and gold to his costume with the color scheme and how iconic the green ranger would be and it's just you know it's really sad losing a piece of the original six now now the second piece of the original mighty morphin uh to go so now that leaves jason kimberly billy and zach now and then also rocky adam aisha and Catherine. You know, the replacement Rangers of MMPR. Um, and then even who would also become the Zeo Rangers, the Turbo Rangers. Um, you know, um, I was reading some Instagram and Facebook uh, posts from actors from Power Rangers, Zeo, and Turbo, like Blake Foster, Justin, the Blue Turbo Ranger. And I saw Blake Foster's post on Facebook and Twitter. No, not Twitter. Facebook and Instagram about JDF. And I was wondering what, what he was heartbroken about. And then even Tracy Lynn Cruz, who played Ashley, the Yellow Turbo and Space Rangers. And then Rod Roger Velasco, who played Carlos, the Green Turbo, later Black Space Ranger. Um, Sulin Ward, Sulin Ward, uh, who played TJ, the Red Turbo Ranger, later turned Blue Space Ranger, posting something about something about JDF. Um I'm surprised Serena Vincent, who played Maya, the Yellow Galaxy Ranger, who's also in his Legend of the White Dragon movie. Jason Fong, who played West, the Red Time Force Ranger. Ciara Hanna, Yellow Mega Force, Super Mega Force Ranger. Um, I haven't heard, I haven't seen posts from them yet, and how how much they he meant to them uh, in their projects lately with uh, Bat in the Sun and, and and with the Power Rangers fandom. I regret wasting all this valuable time. In my first decade of adult life, not meeting Jason David Frank. And uh, so has any other pop culture icon we lost, like Stan Lee of the Marvel Universe, Marvel Comics, and then the voice of Batman, Kevin Conroy. Uh, I don't know why I'm wasting my life away with the life I have behind, behind the camera and off social media. But, but I was already going through my personal mental anguish. And like I discussed a, f a couple of times when certain celebrities I knew for so long passed away of suicide or mental health problems like Robin Williams. I did a video about Robin Williams before on this channel. I never talked about Chester Bennington, the frontman of Lincoln Park, um, the late frontman of Lincoln Park and how he died of suicide. I did talk about, you know, former TNA wrestler, a uh, knockout and WC, WC star, the WCW uh, valet jobber Daphne Unger, Shannon Sprill, and last year and how she died of suicide. I just hate when those you look up to and then you find out they died of suicide because they had mental issues or they just had depression or something that it sucks. And there's many, even there's YouTubers you know, YouTube channels that have, you know, even you can make fun of them and call them lol cows because they made some outlandish content, but deep down they may be troubled individuals. You don't know whether they will commit suicide or not. Even though I don't, you know, I don't condone someone ending their lives just because, yeah, they had a really horrible, horrible hand in life. I myself has had a bad hand in life and, and I have been ridiculed and bullied, harassed and, and led to me to end my life a few times. I'm okay now. I'm fine now, but in the in the 10 years I've been doing this channel, 12 years counting doing my fan film content of Power Rangers, I myself suffer from depression and other mental issues. There's even other celebrities I follow on Instagram or other social media that I've noticed have posted opening up about their struggles with uh, mental health too. Even there's friends I people I follow on social media that have uh, a mental health battle too, like depression, anxiety, social anxiety, and, and where they are in their lives. Even though celebrities, you know, got to realize that there may be too big, you know, they may be a very busy, they may be rich and famous, but in the end, they're human. And even if they're at their worst, I want, you know, even when they're like depressed or if they're at a very low point, 
as a fan, I have to, re you know, as a fan, even if I've never met them face to face, I want to reach out to them on social media to check and see if they're all right. I don't want them to lose their lives. I do not want to see them take something to end their lives, like slit their wrists or whatever. I do not want that to happen. Now, I don't know how JDF, Jason David Frank committed suicide, but but I do know for a fact, for one source say that, well, he was cheating on his wife for another woman. But again, that's none of my business, but it has now become that because, well, here's the thing with men in their 40s versus women in their 40s when it comes to a midlife crisis. Not to be confused with my all-time favorite Faith No More song. Well, JDF was having a midlife crisis. Let's say that. Don't want to glorify it, but midlife crisis for both men and women, because look, in the next 10 years, God forbid if I ever do see 40 in 2032, since I'm 30 now, but when in the next 10 years, I'll be 40, probably still doing this channel. In, you know, when you're in your 40s, men and women, we do go through a thing called a midlife crisis. And I know that when we are in our mid middle age point in our lives, you know, people will look at you different. Younger people will look at you different and see how you're a middle aged uh, has been or whatever. And you're going through doubts of your life and what you could have done differently when you were young and crazy and stupid. But again, but that, but that, but that now is not the time for that. Heck, I mean the stuff I did when I was young and stupid. And then, hell, when I go back, when I turn 40 in 10 years, I'll look back on my 20s and 30s. I'm like, yeah, I wish I could have done things differently. I already have doubts right now in my quarter-life crisis. But men and women, when they're in their 40s, they do do stupid, crazy things too. Not just the young people. Even older people, when they hit 40 and over, can do stupid, crazy things and go through what is, yes, a midlife crisis. And that stuff is real. I mean, my father, even though he's gone, he had a midlife crisis until he was 53 years old. And, and I, I, I had to process that after seven years now since he died. And yeah, midlife crisis affects anyone 40 and over. And they do stupid, crazy things. And whether it be like even after the loss of a family member, like, like I lost my mom and how my mo how my dad lost his wife, my mother, anyone. Or if, if you lost a brother or sister, aunt, uncle, when you're in your late 30s, early 40s, it hits hard. It hits different. Even throughout your 40s and early 50s, it can hit really harder. It sucks. Uh, JDF committed suicide. Um because his stepdaughter committed suicide so he committed suicide too but but not but 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 what really made him commit suicide was his his wife uh Tammy Frank I believe caught him cheating on another woman yeah he was in then the, you know the divorce and I'm like damn JDF just did it he he just ended himself but then I also have to talk about a bit about like men who are driven by suicide by vindictive, deceptive women. Now, I don't know JDF's wife, Tammy, personally, uh, but I'm not going to say she is a deceptive, uh, you know, conniving, uh, manipulative woman in Jason's life. That's not true. She just caught him cheating on her for another woman. Yeah, of course, they were probably, yeah, of course, you know, again, when women go through a midlife crisis, too, they do stuff, too, to, you know, try to get back at a man. And then if a man catches her cheating on him for, like, uh, another man or uh, or another woman, if she's a lesbian, you know, for real. But, okay, not, not, that's not time for that. But that stuff can happen, too. And, uh, and sometimes... Men and women, when they're in their 40s, they do do things to wish they were young, but they have to accept the fact that we all grow old. Yeah, we'll always, you know, for for the older, elder folks, they'll say that anyone 40 and under, under 60 is still young considerably. But for the younger people, like the young 20-year-olds and stuff, they'll say 40 is definitely old. Well, yeah, well, wait until those 20-year-olds grow up in two decades. And like the 20-year-olds now, when they turn 40 in the next two decades, trust me. 
But now is not the time to say that stuff. Men and women, when they turn 40, I got off topic. Men and women, when they turn 40, they do stuff like, you know, start seeing someone younger. Like women, when they turn 40, they likely will probably see a young, will seek a younger man or date a man way older than they are. And men will do definitely automatically men will do the same. Men will probably date someone younger a female younger than he is if he's 40 and she's like in her early to mid 20s and her peak and stuff somewhat 30 and uh but you know for men like you know the thing is you know when men are in their 40s men only want to see what m m men only will want a date a female younger than they are but see here's the problem but like suppose if you're if you're like a 50 year old man dating someone who's like 19 20 21 22 She's like old enough, young enough, young enough, old enough to be like your your a, a stepdaughter or a granddaughter you wish you had or the or biological daughter you wish you had. But don't do that. I mean, even though most I understand from like for someone who was watching those man, man of spear, MGTOW videos. Now, I'm not part of that community. Thank God I'm not because those channels. But, you know, but even it may be true that men, when they turn 40, they want to seek a younger woman. They don't want no woman when they're old and stuff as much as women but yet women when they're old the men in their lives don't want them because women when they turn 40 they're undesirable and that's why this whole hitting the wall stuff and uh and i think that's what jdf did to his wife tammy he just wanted to see someone younger because tammy was i don't know because it, that's how it is with men and women in midlife in a midlife crisis situation but then when, if you have a woman going around accusing you of something horrible and to drive you to suicide, that sucks. And that is not good. And what's even worse is, uh, you know, we had a former Power Ranger commit suicide a couple years ago, and I mentioned Pua Magasiva. I will discuss Pua Magasiva when we get to the 20th anniversary of Ninja Storm coming up, trust me. And I, I have a lot to say about Pua three years late, three and a half, four years late since 20, since his death in 2019. And it's not going to be pretty. And regarding about men and women in certain situations like domestic violence or, or divorce, nasty divorces and, and stuff like that between men and women. But again, I'm not in a relationship. Well, for, for those who don't know about me, I'm not in a relationship or anything right now with a woman or anything. But, but I have gotten into some s stuff with a woman. And what drove me into suicide myself one time, too. Um, but I'm scared to talk about that because no one's going to believe me, a man, because a woman went around and accused me of something and it drove me to stuff like this, too. But JDF, I don't know what happened. Like, I think JDF and his wife got into an argument, got into a fight. Or I don't know what happened. I think that would explain why JDF went and announced his retirement from Power Rangers and the focus on the Legend of the White Dragon. And I knew, looking back, if you go back and watch that Power Morphicon panel for Legend of the White Dragon now, it's kind of eerie and scary just thinking about what has transpired this month. And uh, I know I had to do a video talking about his retirement of Power Rangers following that Legend of the White Dragon panel uh, months late after Power Morphicon ended in August this summer and then going into October and now November. I'm like, damn. He's gone. And it's just, I mean, at least JDF didn't beat his wife or anything. Like, um, again, a former Power Ranger who did beat his wife that led to his suicide. Um, and, I, and I said this, if you go back to my I hate Randy Orton WWE is dead vlog video. Uh, how, well, Randy Orton is still alive and well, even though fuck Randy Orton for what he did to Beth Phoenix. But again, I got to move on from that, even though I don't watch WWE no more. But... But, you know, I don't condone men who put their hands on women out of anger and stuff. But, you know, JDF, I don't think he ever did beat his wife or anything that led to the divorce and his suicide like Pua did. Um, or any of the substantial evidence that led to his death last night on the 19th of November. And um, I, I just don't know. Because you know how much I don't support men who do violence against women out of anger. If a woman gets mad and angry with you, just walk away. Just don't get mad. Don't put your hands on her, choke her, or do what, what like I said about Randy Orton, 
in WWE from a few years ago or with Alexa Bliss last year. Just don't get angry with women and then put her hands on her out of anger because that makes me, other men and even women hate you if you put your hands on women and turn turn on you. So just don't do it. And even though this is not the only, you know, JDF is not the only Power Ranger actor that we lost that of suicide uh, due to some stuff with a woman. Pua Magasteva, who played, again, Shane, the Red Ninja Storm Ranger, had gone through some shit with his wife, too. Um, a woman. And they say, believe all women, right? You know, if the woman says you did beat her or raped her or stalked her, you know, you got to take it into account and face that justice, man. And, you know, you did the crime due to time, right? And, uh, um, lost two Power Ranger, lost two Power Rangers in real life who I looked up to as a kid. And then both those men, as I got older, died of suicide because of some altercations with their, with the women in their lives, posthumously. And, uh, you know, you know, and with all the crap going on with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, and if Johnny did do well, uh, even though Amber Heard is, is was a piece of shit woman herself for putting Johnny through all that mess and made him lose a lot of roles in movies and stuff lately, and it's just, it's true. They think, you know, women, uh, I don't want to say because... I'm going to probably go and get some heat for this. Like, like, and if for those who didn't catch on to my I Hate Randy Orton video uh, a couple weeks ago. And even what I said in my I Wasted My 20s vlog a couple weeks ago, too. And I got to understand that if the woman said you did cheat on her or abused her, you did do it. If you didn't. And... It's just messed. It's just fucked up. As a lifelong Power Rangers fan, I, I I had no idea that this had to happen. And I I I I I, I didn't know he committed suicide. If JDF was suffering from something worse than mental health, like, you know, like usual, anytime I hear a celebrity die of cancer or or died of some other means, uh, like a car accident, that's horrible. That's horrible. Um, that's horrible. Um... Uh, I know it's embarrassing to see me cry like this on video, but I just lost a childhood icon. Someone that inspired me to be a Power Ranger as a YouTube, Power Ranger YouTuber and, and all of that. But it's unfortunate that the leader of many Power Ranger teams, you know, Mighty Morphin, Zeo, the first chunk of Turbo, Dino Thunder, it it's just... Uh, it's it's just unreal. And I know I'll talk about Kevin Conroy this week as well, since I'm a week late to discuss him and remember how much he meant to me as a Batman fan uh, as well. But but mainly Power Rangers. But, you know, Power Rangers has been going on for almost 30 years now. And it's just why at this time before the upcoming monumental massive milestone of a 30th anniversary he would go this soon and if he was still here today and september next year comes up he would have celebrated his 50th year of life but 49 years before the big 5-0 next year in september man. this is this is too unreal this is this is real unreal 
But like I did when I did a video talking about Daphne and her suicide, well, like I said, if you have a, a friend or family member who may be suffering from mental health problems like depression is, and also is thinking of taking their own life, call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline or dial 911. Suicide is not an option, Rangers. Just because you went through a really horrible, nasty divorce or some woman ruins your life with a false accusation of like rape, sexual harassment, stalking, or any other means of allegations that, that was placed against you. Suicide is not an option. Even if you uh even if um even if you did do it, you have to pay the time in, in prison. And I know it sucks, but life can be hard. But even though I I, I I did not know that JDF was cheating on his wife and that's why the divorce happened and I think that would explain why it was so melancholy of JDF on his social medias lately where damn he was that depressed he was even depressed when he stated about him not coming back for the 30th anniversary um, in favor of Legend of the White Dragon I think looking back on the posts he posted You know, talking about him leaving Power Rangers behind. And I guess, yes, it was for the best because there's not much Tommy could do as a Ranger past Dimensions in Danger now and the 25th anniversary. Now with the upcoming 30th coming up, there's not much Tommy can do anymore. So maybe if they would go back and reshoot a little bit for the th reshoot the 30th anniversary a little bit. Or maybe in the end credits of the 30th anniversary special, they'll probably do a tribute to JDF saying, rest in power, Jason David Frank, probably in the end credits. Probably. And maybe on the first episode of Power Rangers Cosmic Fury, they'll probably do a memory of tribute to JDF also in the first episode of um, Cosmic Fury. And uh, it sucks. The most important Power Ranger of all time is gone. There will never be anyone like Jason David Frank ever again. The battery going down. All I can say is, I'll do a further thoughts video later, but all I can say is, thank you, Jason David Frank. Thank you for bringing a lot of life to the Power Rangers franchise and lifting up you know, hopes for all of those kids like myself that was going through a lot of pain and despair and, uh, and adults right now and all of pop culture and putting so much impact on pop culture. So anyway, thank you. Don't ever be anyone like him ever again.